Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Bianchi. We're looking at number two. Patricia is, is separating 16 soccer cards and 12 baseball cards into groups. Each group will have the same number of cards and each group will have only one kind of sports card. What is the greatest number of cards she can put in each group? How many groups of each type will there be? So there's a lot going on and in class I've been talking about how you really need to read these problems at least four or five times to really understand what's going on. But let's talk about some of the key words that we discussed in class that would suggest you're going to be applying the distributor property. Now the first words that we're going to look at is this idea of greatest number of. So most of these problems are going to, you're going to see those words or something that implies greatest number of because there's other words that mean the same idea as being a greater number. So that would imply that you need to find the GCF. So I'm just going to leave an open space here and we're going to write GCF right here so we know we have to find that. All right, so let's look for some other key words that we talked about in class and that's the idea of same number of. When you see that in a word problem, then that's when you say, oh, that's when you have to apply distributor property. So we're going to take this GCF and we're going to multiply it by the sum of two numbers. Why two numbers? Because there's two things going on here. We have a bunch of soccer cards and we have a bunch of baseball cards. In fact, let's write those facts down over here. We have 16 soccer cards and we have 22 baseball cards. All right, so we do need to find the GCF of these two numbers, and how would we do that? We have a number of ways we could do it, but in class we've been talking about using prime factorization. So let's write these numbers down, and we'll start our factor tree. So we have the number 16, and we have the number 22. And we always like to draw a line to separate our workspace, so we'll do that here. Maybe make that a little bit longer. All right, so we think of factors other than 1 times 16. And also, in class, we talked about how if you can come up with what you believe to be the suspected GCF and put that suspected GCF in the lineup of both factor trees, then that would be helpful. So you might think that the suspected GCF is 2. So I'm going to put that in both trees, and I'll use blue to help that stand out. And then over here, we're going to write what the other factors are. So over here, 2 times 8 would be 16. And over here, 2 times 11 would be 16. All right, so once you've gotten to that stage of the branching, some folks are going to see that the red numbers would not share common factors, 11's prime. But if that doesn't make any sense to you, what I'm saying, then you have to kind of keep going with your factor trees. So over here, we would do a 2 times 4. And over here, we would do a 2 times 2. And then it's good practice to bring down your other numbers. So bring this down so everything's on one row. We'll bring this number down. And we'll put multiplication signs in between. All right, and this, these are prime numbers. So this is done. This tree's done. This is prime, and so is this. All right, so now it's time to start making our Venn diagram. One of the circles will be talking about the prime numbers for the first number, the other will be the prime factorization for the other number. So that first circle, let's have that be for 16, this circle right here. And this circle will be the prime factorization for 22. All right, now what do we put where the circles interlock? We put the numbers that match. What matches? We have a pair of matching twos. So we're gonna write that down. Now that's the only number that's a match in both prime factorizations. The other numbers, if we were interested in the LCM, we would put these numbers over here, we'd put the 11 over here, and we multiply all that together, but we're interested in the GCF. Now when there's only one number, then that one number is the GCF. So this is the GCF, and we're going to put it right here. All right, now I like to right away ask ourselves, to what? Because usually this is going to be a something per something. Something per something. Let's try to figure that out. How do we figure that out? Let's look at the problem again. What is the greatest number of, and then we're talking about cards per group. Cards per group. Each group would imply one group. So cards per group. Now, why is it important to write down these words? Because it's gonna, you're going to have a bunch of numbers when you're done, and you're not going to know which number goes with what if you don't label things. So this is cards per group. All right, now the other thing that's a little hint that I'm going to give you if you can figure out the something per something, then usually the words that you're going to put underneath here 
this is going to be a certain number of groups. And this is going to be a certain number of groups. But then how are the groups going to be different from each other? Let's go back and look at the problem again. We have 16 soccer cards and we have 22 baseball cards. So we're talking about soccer. Let's put an S here. And we're talking about baseball. Let's put a B here. All right, now we already found the GCF and we got two. So now the question becomes, two times what would give us 16? And that would be eight. Two times what would give us 22 baseball cards? And that would be 11. So let's recap what the questions are. Remember, there's two parts to this. Part A, what is the greatest number of cards she can put in each group? That's going to be two cards per group, right? Two cards per group. The second part, how many groups of each type will there be? We're going to have eight groups of soccer cards, and we'll have 11 groups of baseball cards. Now, if they just wanted to know how many groups will there be all together, then you would be adding these two things together, but we're not doing that for this particular question. Now, the other thing I should mention is if we were to add this number, to these two numbers together, that would be 19 groups. And if I applied order of operations and did 2 times 19, so I'm going to put that computation over here, 2 times 19, it should be the same thing we would get if we added the two things together. So here we get the 8, and here we get the 3 by adding them, and we should get 38 also over here. This times this is 18, and this would be 3. So the fact that the two things equal each other, that's a good sign that we have all the right numbers as, as confirmation that we're on the right track. All right, good luck finishing up the rest of this.